All right, guys, what's up? BQ here and TW with the Cool Factor Podcast, and this is our Hard to Kill review, full show review. I did a, a small recap uh, the other night. I was really frustrated because it was supposed to come out <laughs> right after the pay-per-view. I went to bed, left it uh, uploading, and the uploading the upload stalled, so I didn't get to take advantage of the the high overnight traffic for the pay-per-view, so it was, it was a little frustrating, but I did get it out to you guys. wanted to give, you know, just quick thoughts and we're going to get into it a little more in depth the the cool thing about this is that uh i don't know i don't really know tw's thoughts on a lot of these matches um yeah we text here and there and usually i have a good idea when we review the show but uh this time around i really don't know what he thinks about anything so you know uh the, the opening thing i'm going to say about the pay-per-view and then i'll kind of let you give a just opening statement about it uh before we get down get into it uh match by match uh it was cool that I saw a lot of people on Twitter, you know, like, can't wait to hear BQ's thoughts on this because, you know, uh, since I've been doing this and, and I give this little <clears throat> little speech every every few podcasts, if it's good, I'll say it's good. If it's bad, I, I'm going to say it's bad. Uh, I say that to you guys a lot uh, because I want my words to to mean something. It's not it's not fluff coming from me. Um, <coughs> that's why, you know, I, I sometimes I'm criticize I criticize, uh, you know, the words stacked and dream matches and must see because those well, those words mean nothing uh, when, when you're watching Impact now because it's so overused. So, you know, I want the same thing for me. If I tell you every single episode of Impact is so, oh, my God, whoa. And then a great pay-per-view like this rolls around. I mean, what what kind of weight do my words have? You know, like, you know, I love this pay-per-view. And uh, you know that that's, that's the truth. So I have only maybe one minor thing about it, um, but that really that's it. So, TW, give me your thoughts overall about the pay-per-view before we kind of like, you know, go match by match. Yeah, man. Um, so my first initial impression coming out was that this is another another positive, you know, notch in the win column. Um, you know, obviously the biggest takeaway is the main event. I won't dive into it too well, but they got it right. They got this whole pay-per-view right. And uh, save for, you know, one segment, I mean, this was this was a really good show, man. This was a really good show. Uh, even some of the stuff that I normally crap on was good. And, um, yo, they, listen, if you – here's what I think is exciting if you're an Impact Wrestling fan. Obviously, you can't take – you can't take the pandemic away. But – if you just go back to this time last year, right? Impact was, you know, again, audiences were growing and growing and growing. They took a big swing trying to do the Tessa Blanchard thing. And if you just look since then, man, it's been basically pretty positive, man. So if you're an Impact Wrestling fan, you should feel excited and you should feel more and more comfortable talking to people about this product that you like and enjoy because they're getting more and more mainstream buzz. I, you know, listen, the, the biggest takeaway is that Impact is on an upward trajectory right now and you got to feel good about it. So what were your thoughts about, I didn't talk, I don't think I talked about this uh, the other day on the channel. What were your thoughts about the hyped in crowd and... I, I saw some mixed reactions. Uh, I personally liked it. I thought maybe there's once or twice it sounded super fake. It was much better than the Global Force Wrestling time where they were trying to do it and it was just <laughs> insanely fake. You heard like, boo, like no one cheers like that anymore. You know what I mean? So right. uh, this time around, I thought was was pretty natural for about 90% of the show. But what do you think? So here's the thing with the fake with the with the piped in crowd noise. I think it's acceptable because everybody's piping in crowd noise right now. I don't know if AEW is doing it, but uh, but WWE certainly is. Like you certainly know that those sounds aren't coming from the video screens. You know that for sure. <laughs> I think it's to have the piped in crowd noise without even any type of visual representation of fans looks and sounds weird. But I can't lie. Like it just it was nice to hear some reaction. It was yeah. nice to hear some reaction, even though I knew it was fake. Like I got over the fact that it was fake pretty quick and, and I wasn't harping on it. I just enjoyed having it there. So, you know, we have been consistently complaining about the fact that there's no fans and the big reason is because you want and need that reaction. It's part of the show. And listen, adding that piped in crowd noise, it gives you, it gives you at least at home, it gives you somewhat of that reaction back. Yeah, exactly. 
I I initially thought there were some people there. I thought it was a, a combination of the two, but from what I understand, it, it was all piped in. But the only time that it really, there was a couple times where the wrestlers weren't making noise and you could hear it and it was a little fake, but for right. the most part, it sounded good. Um, the only time that I, I would have, that it stood out to me was when Kenny Omega got tagged in for the first time. And there was just yeah. no, it was just white noise. You have right. people, you know what I mean? Like you would, that, yeah. that's something I would have piped in some, you know, something, some kind of right. crescendo. Um, but other than that, they did a good job. Really, for the most part, I don't think the editing, I think Eric Young said they have the best editing team in the business or whatever. I, I don't agree with that uh, based on the weekly show, but I thought mm. they did a really good job with this. Um, so I thought it was cool. Let's, um, let's talk real quick. The, uh, um, well, first of all, the, before we get into matches, we had a new commentary team. Uh, you know, I, I, I tweeted that I was like erect over how good it was. Um, <laughs> you, you know, <laughs> there, how there was, good there was, was it? There, right? <laughs> there was one match and I said, I had one minor complaint. There was one match. I didn't like the commentary during, and I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll get into that and why I didn't like it. But it wasn't necessarily their fault, but it kind of what just I'll, I'll get into it later. But I thought they did an excellent job just focus on the action, making the matches feel important and matter. Mm-hmm. And just hearing a new voice was just such a breath of yeah. fresh air. There's no no silly banter. Yeah. Um, you know, I understand when we grew up, there was heel commentators, but mm-hmm. the, the baby face play by play always stayed laser focused on the action no matter yeah. no matter what bobby heenan was saying right you know gorilla was calling the action and, and we, the way it was getting was it was just going into left field and talking about shit that you know didn't didn't match what was going on in the ring in front of us because the announcer is part of the story we just talk about wrestling's a story did it well the the announcer is part of that story and when they start mm-hmm doing something else it, you know it takes away from it but you got any comments on the commentary i know you don't really care about commentary but... right now again because i'm not a big announcing guy but i got i can't lie like not hearing josh matthews voice was noticeable it was noticeable <laughs> um you know and, and and again i'm not a big commentary guy so there's things that some people noticed that i didn't quite notice there's actually some things that i noticed like i think there was d sounded a little nervous at times um, he said there was a couple of times where I thought he kind of wanted to say something and he might have stumbled over what he was going to say a little bit because I think there was a lot of pressure because there were so many people that were like, God, yes, thank you, changing and house team. And he did uh commentary on, I think, uh, an Impact Plus, Impact Plus special yeah. a year or two ago. And everybody was like, oh, my God, yes, come on, D'Lo. <laughs> so he probably felt a little bit of pressure doing this for the first time. I'm yeah. sure he'll settle in as he goes along. Um, Matt Stryker is good, man. Matt Stryker is good. He can be a little over the top sometimes. But, again, this is wrestling, man. This is wrestling. I look, listen, if I were booking a wrestling show right now, I would go out and find, I would go to like, you know, some, some, some college or some minor league baseball team or somebody and find me just a good color commentary guy who's good at calling action. And then I don't care if you like wrestling or not, like you just, gonna, you'll, you'll learn that stuff, but I just want somebody who's just good at calling action. And Matt Stryker is good at calling action. There's times when people get into trying to be too descriptive about stuff, trying to emphasize too much, but Matt Stryker is good, man. He's yeah. good. He's not like a, you know, he's not like a Mar Ronaldo, but he's good. He's, he's, he has a standout voice and he does do good with like those outlandish statements when he's emphasizing stuff sometimes. So I'm a big fan of it. I, I think this is going to, um, you know, hopefully going to be the, the voice uh, of, of impact for a while now. And for what, what I'm understanding there, there, there is more changes coming to commentary. And I don't know if that means a third person. I don't know what it means, but I know that uh, they're working on something else with the commentary. So we'll see. It's supposed to be another major improvement. So, uh, you know, take that for what it is. Let's get into the first match. So uh, we're actually going to talk Brian Myers, Josh Alexander real quick. We don't have to get into it too much because I actually tuned in like halfway during this match. I don't know why I forgot to turn the TV on for it, but um, it was about halfway through. Um, my 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 gut tells me that this was Ethan versus um, Alexander was probably supposed to be on this pay-per-view. Hmm. And maybe Ethan Page didn't want to put Josh Alexander over. We're going to talk a little bit more about... Um, Ethan Page. I don't, I don't know. I, 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 be, I, I don't know anything. I don't really know anything. Just from what I've seen from the blogs, man, they look like they're genuinely like friends. Yeah, and right. I, I, I would think that given the opportunity 
to do something like that to get Josh Alexander started on his singles run. I think I think Ethan Page would be willing to do that. All right. Well, yeah, yeah you know that that's probably accurate. I, I say it's my gut, but it's probably yeah, wrong. Yeah. So, what do you got on a? Do, you, do you, this do anything for you? Because uh, we like well, Brian, Brian Myers won. Yeah, and he got the win. So, and I, I, I thought that was interesting because I was like, okay, who are you going to give the win to here? I was, cause I was like, these are both two guys who have p- great potential. I was like, I was watching this match and I was thinking to myself, I was like, man, a year from now, this could be your main event. You know, <laughs> right. if if you take good care of these guys and you build them, because man, I I feel like Josh Alexander has so much untapped potential. He just looks like a killer. Everybody says he's a killer, and so now you've got to show us that he's a killer, right? Um, yeah. And then, you know, tell us a little story, give us a little bit of character, whatever you got to do. But I'm like, it, it all appears to be right there with Josh Alexander. Um, so I think Brian Myers needed the win more because Brian Myers is in the process of shedding that. What was his WWE name? Uh, Kurt, Hawkins. Kurt Hawkins. Yeah. Kurt Hawkins. Yeah. He's in the he's in the process of shedding the stink of Kurt Hawkins. Right. The whatever, yeah. however many year losing streak or whatever he was on. Right. Um, and so he needed the win more. So if you think about it like that, then the right person won. Uh, to me, it doesn't hurt Josh Alexander at all. They had a good match. It was competitive. And yeah, somebody had to win. So, you know, uh, Brian Myers is probably the right person to win. All right. I agree with that assessment. Uh, so the first match of the actual pay-per-view itself was Decay, and uh, they have its T-shirt out and everything, and they were they were announced as Decay, but it's Decay versus Caleb with a K and Tenille Dashwood. So the first thing I have to say about this is that it really felt right seeing Crazy Steve in this role. Like, I much prefer him like this than mm. coming out with the monkey and and everything. Like this this felt right. I'm not a big fan of Rosemary's hair at all, but I mean, it's her decision, not mine. So, you know, <laughs> knock yourself out. Um, I, I wasn't a big fan of it, but it's it's nice to see them back together again. It was just, mm-hmm. it felt right for Crazy Steve to come down with that music and everything. And then he, you know, the the presentation of, of the, um, the the ring entrance, what he was kind of doing, what Rosemary was doing, like, it, it was just cool. And then, um, you know, obviously I like Tineal and Caleb quite a bit as well and they oh, never fail to make me laugh during the match um you know I, i'll say this was one of the matches i kind of got some mixed reactions on that i saw where some people thought maybe it was a little clunky or whatever yeah. but um i enjoyed it i really didn't think uh i thought it was a good opener you, usually we get that yeah. standard x division mm-hmm. means nothing match you know a multi-man six way that the you know the winner wins and it means nothing like this was yeah. This was cool. It was just a good feel good moment to start off the show and gave us a, you know, what I, what I had said on YouTube the other day was that I felt the company's losing its identity a little as far as like the recent TNA stuff. Like they don't ever want you to forget about the AJ style stuff, but the recent stuff that the hardcore fans did like, yeah, they're getting away for so much from so much of that. And decay would fall into that category for you. What was that? You said decay falls into that category. Decay. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, just that, just that Orlando, that those last few years in Orlando, where the hardcore yeah. fans, you know, really still liked what was going on. Yeah, you know, they've gotten away from so much of that. Well, you know what? When I saw Decay, my when I see Decay, my thought is Billy Corgan, right? This was the uh, this is the remnants of the Billy Corgan era, and yeah. you know, Billy Corgan has made no bones about how he feels about impact wrestling <laughs> so the idea of bringing back you know the dollhouse or you know what I mean? or anything like that which were, i thought were good ideas right yeah. good ideas um but i mean yeah i mean you know it, it was fine it was fine it was ever i mean like um i think that rosemary has like so much untapped potential i don't know i feel like she has another level that she was on pre-injury remember she, remember she got injured in mexico and then she was out for a while and i thought she was just on a different level before that and she has yet to return to that level and i don't know if it's a dedication issue like i don't know if the injury just won't allow her to get back to that level but i feel like as a wrestler she has a level that i'd like to see her get back to that she just hasn't been on for a long time and they have they've been having her do so much character-based stuff that she's been, you know, able to still be a big part of the show, but I want to see the wrestler come back. 
You know what I mean? I want to yeah. see the I want to see the wrestler come back because the wrestler will make the character so much better. Yeah, it's, it's like it's hard to believe as over as she is and as long as she's been around, she's a one-time knockouts champion. That's yeah. insane yeah. to think about. And uh, I, I was worried they weren't going to get her back to that level, you know, because I was just like, I don't see a path to the knockouts championship for her right now, and I haven't for a while. I don't even know if she's gotten a title match. She, she probably got one she probably versus has. Ty Valkyrie at one point. I mean, she had the title for so long. I'm sure they wrestled, but yeah. uh, I, I hadn't seen a path, and I don't. I still don't really see a path for her. But you know, it, it's a possibility. But it, it, it was nice to see that, and they get the win. Uh, you know, they played the hits as far as the uh, spray, the mist, and all that. But you yeah. know, good good stuff. Uh, and I think Crazy Steve's tornado DDT is pretty pretty damn good for someone who can't see. Like he he nailed yeah. that. Yeah, well. listen, I'm very impressed. Like w- once I I think I was on I was listening to some podcast. I think they were interviewing Eric Young, and he's talking about how like no Crazy Steve legitimately can't see. Like he's blind. I was like, oh my god. And so ever since I heard that, I'm so much more impressed by everything I see Crazy Steve do. He's <laughs> he's legally blind. It's it's very impressive. Yeah, I got a, I got a buddy um, who's legally blind. Mm-hmm. Uh, from high school, I, I still I still talk with him actually, and I've met Crazy Steve one time, and he he had glasses on doing doing interviews. I mean, uh, signing autographs, whatever. He was with Rosemary. He had glasses, and you could tell he's he can see something, but but it, yeah. but he's definitely struck. And I re, it reminded me of my buddy, like the the mannerisms were real real similar of trying okay. to like see what yeah. was in front. Right, of right, 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 right. But yeah. Uh, but I mean, well, at one point, requires so much coordination, right? Like yeah. that's the thing that makes it so impressive because, you know, it's not like, like you said, you you can see something, but you need to see a lot in wrestling. Like you need to know, like you yeah. know, wrist lock, arm drag, you know, whatever you're doing, yeah. like you you got seeing helps. I would think. You yeah. Know? So he, com- yeah. he compared himself to like the daredevil of wrestling. Like yeah. If you don't know Daredevil, yeah, 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 yeah. no, that's 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 dope. I mean, that's actually if uh you know he wanted to, he shouldn't tell that to anybody in TNA because they'll make him be Daredevil. Yeah, they'll make him be a blind superhero. What's <laughs> even more impressive is that he wrestled with the Suicide Mask on. He did. Weeks. Yeah. Oh, that's he, right. He did. He did. I thought I thought that he was like he was suicide, but like yeah, no, right. So oh my god, when you think about that, right? Like your vision's already impaired, and you put a mask on. Jeez, <laughs> that's, that's yo. Wow. Yeah, I would love to hear his thoughts on that someday. Yeah. So we'll see. Um, so next match, I will say at the conclusion of this match, this is when I knew this pay per view was going to be good because traditionally my second, the second match is always like my least favorite. Okay. And it always kind of takes me out of the show, and then I don't really get get back there again. It's weird. Uh-huh. This was a violent by design. So they're starting to brand the teams a little bit. I like yeah, that. I noticed that. Uh, violent by design. Um, Taking on Cousin Jake, who I hope they repackage here soon. Tommy Dreamer, who I hope never comes on TV again. And Rhino. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. But um, so this was a match that I was like, dude, I'm not going to enjoy this. Because I, I always talk about I hate old school rules. And a lot of the reason I hate it is when they start taking out the the cake pans and the stop sign. Yeah. Like, it, it goes from a hardcore match to just being silly. Yeah. Y- you know, it's... it's um. Usually when they say a match is no disqualification, like mm. not like street fight, not like, hey, this match is no DQ. You right. those usually tend to be a little more hardcore because mm. it means, oh, we can get away with whatever. But with the minute you start putting street fight on there and old school rules on something, like it gets very silly. Right. Um, I didn't get that this time around. I thought everything was just very, very well done. And I I think Diener, like I love his character. Okay. He looks really good next to Eric Young. Like they kind of have similarities, but kind of differences. So they, yeah, they like they look good next to each other. Uh, I don't like the single name thing. It's kind of like you you got your Seth Rollins shirt on. I know that he well, who's his partner uh, Murphy. Oh yeah, well not anymore, but it was yeah. Okay, yeah. But he Murphy. was just a single name, right? Mm-hmm. I, that Murphy. always bugged. Like you got two guys who kind of look like each other in a way. <laughs> <laughs> one has a full name and one has a sing- just give them both full names. Right. <laughs> it just, uh, it drives me crazy. But um, yeah. So uh, the match overall was good. Violent by Design won as they as they you know probably should have. We don't need Dreamer getting over on the pay per view. But right. um, 
I don't know. Once this match was over, I, I was like, this is going to be a good pay-per-view because I was not turned off by the match that I assumed was going to turn me off. <laughs> You're like, if Tommy Dreamer can't F this up, nobody can. <laughs> right, right. That's Yeah, I mean, Tommy, he delivers on pay-per-views for what he does, but I just mean usually his matches are my least favorite. Him and, yeah. for some reason, Eddie Edwards, even though he's like one of my favorites, I never seem to like his pay-per-view matches. I don't know why. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, just... I just knew I was going to enjoy the pay-per-view when this one was over. So. Yeah, yeah, it, it was solid. It, you had a bunch of guys who all deliver. And see, here's the thing. One thing that Impact has been great at under the uh, callous Demore regime is reshuffling and restocking the roster, right? Taking guys and building them up. And so I think it feels like we're at a, a turnover point. It feels like there's people on the way out. And yeah. that means it's time for more people to step up, which will create space for, I guess, new faces to come in. So I'm, I, I, I tend to find myself always looking for who's that next person that's going to be, you know, coming up or starting to get built up. So in this category, in this match, you would have to say it'd have to be Jake and it'd have to be Cody Diener, right? Even though Cody Diener, Cody Diener was the Impact Knockouts champions with, uh, with ODB. Right, ago. right. Yeah, yeah, like he's been around for a long time. He's coming but back. Did you see the that? haircut? Completely makes him look different. Yeah, makes him look totally different. So and he's all jacked, and it's or he's like totally cut, and it's like where, yeah. where did this guy come from? So it feels like you know, it feels like a different wrestler completely. So I mean, yeah, I mean, I uh, I, I thought it was a, it was it was a good match. It was you know solid early this this early point in the show. I was still getting my kids to bed, which I was actually so grateful that they put this stuff on then because <laughs> this is stuff I didn't mind not being able to sit down and pay full attention to. Right. You know, ODB's coming back, right? Is she? Yeah. Okay. So people assume she's going to be part of the state. <laughs> Does she need no money for her food truck? Is that what it is? I don't know. No, I don't know. She's just stay there. She's going to do, I don't know if it's a set of tapings or be back for a while. I don't know. But people are assuming that she's going to be part of Violent by Design. But I'm like, she's ODB's pretty over, man. I don't see her. I, I understand she has a, a, a um, what do you call a uh, history with Diener and with Eric Young and all that. But mm -hmm. I, I just don't, I don't see that. She, she's way too. That's old. interesting. Now that you mention it, ODB should not come back without fans. Right, like people are like you, because first thing you said, ODB is pretty over. So when somebody who's pretty over appears on the show, you want to hear them get that reception. Yeah. So right, so I so I feel like if you're gonna bring back ODB, bring back ODB when she can get the pop she deserves. Yeah, I, I feel that. Um, but they need her to be a baby face because now, uh, Susan is a heel. You know, the Susan right. and Sue Young character had been a baby face for a little bit, so. Uh -huh. I don't know. <laughs> they need to breathe some life into the knockouts yeah, with baby yeah, faces. So, you know, she's a, she's an easy option to, to throw in there. So um, speaking of knockouts, Faya and Flava took on, uh, and that's Kara Hogan and Tasha Steeles. Once they gave them a name, I was like, they're going to win. Um, they took on Havoc and Nevea. Um, This was a finals match that I think everyone expected it to ultimately be because they were the two established teams. So it made sense for them to yeah. be there. Um, I think one of the my pet peeves in wrestling is, is a lot of the times when you put established teams against non-established teams, the established team always loses somehow. Mm. Um, and Impact is, is does that all the time. I started noticing it in WWE years ago. They would be like, "Oh, the main event." They would take the tag team champions against <laughs> you know two singular guys, right. two and, single uh, guys, but, but way bigger stars than the tag team. Uh, right, right. <laughs> Here's our 10 month reigning tag team champions against John Cena and Randy Orton, the yeah. reluctant pair. <laughs> Get their asses kicked. Yeah. So it was nice to see the, the continuity of the teams who, I mean, it told the story that the teams that were together the longest made it to the final. So right. it was really well done. And this was, you know, um, Kira and Tasha were the, was the team that really deserved to win this thing. Uh, Havoc and Nevaeh, I mean, a close second. I mean, absolutely. But this was a team I expected to win. And uh, I think they're going to do, they have the personality to really run with this and make the titles mean something and awesome. I'm a little concerned because now they're, you know, they start breaking up all the teams that were in the tournament for the yeah. most part. And then you didn't really sign the girls that you brought in for the tournament. At least I'm not under the impression they have. So um, I don't know where the division's going. I always brought up the idea of just bringing in local talents to, to 
you know, to challenge. You don't have to worry about mm-hmm. building feuds too much within the company. But what do you got on the uh, knockouts tag team championship? Match? I was glad to see. I was glad to see Kiera and uh, and and Tasha Steels win it. Um, you know, they, they definitely to me. I think with every tag team, every great tag team to me, you have a great wrestler and a great character. Like I love the beautiful people. Um, uh, uh, Velvet was the character. Angelina Love was the wrestler. And you need both. You know what I mean? You need both. And uh, with these guys, I don't know, man. I just I think they they work really well. They're fun to watch. You know, they they make the screen come alive whenever they're on. And yeah, I was I was glad to see them win. Um, I think Havoc and Nevaeh are good too, and they'll get those titles eventually. But I hope they do your idea. I hope that they take those women's tag titles and use them to go defend them on AEW, go defend them at, you know, random house shows or whatever, because otherwise I don't know what they're going to do with them. They don't have but so many women on the roster and, you know, they can, you know, bring in a, a different tag team every they can bring in a different tag team every every set of tapings to feud, but you know, eventually you're gonna want to lead to some big matches. Mm-hmm. So um, so yeah, you're gonna have to figure out something to to make this work. I hope they have a plan. Yeah, I hope I hope so too. You don't want to blow your load right away against the established teams and then all the feuds are gone. You know, that's definitely definitely not what you want. And this was a these two girl these four girls that had already been feuding several months ago. So I, they you know they brought them back again together so um so that was good but yeah from what kind of what i was told was that the company feels very confident in their ability to bring in women because it doesn't matter what the status of impact is or what the history has been like the knockouts have always been held in a in a high regard right matter the status of the company so they do feel that bringing in potential women whether it be on short term long term they I, they're not really scared of their ability to do that um yeah. from what i understand so and that you know and that that's very true yeah. um I, I i can i can definitely agree with that i mean if you look at like you know um not to like calling anybody out but like you know i'll just say impact is not like selling women on like tna you know what i'm saying <laughs> like yeah. you know it's not like you got to be it's not like you got to look like a model to to be on impact and i think that's a great thing you know what i mean that's a great thing because you you can come in and you can have good matches but you don't got to be worried about hey do i look like you know a pinup girl or something like that right you know right I mean? so i think that definitely helps i do think they need a couple pinup girls because i just think you. <laughs> I, I don't mean like I, I don't mean i want to stare at them i just mean i think you have to have some a little bit of everything yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt. Well, I thought actually when they had Scarlet, right? I thought Scarlet was actually a very interesting, like, um, she was a, a very interesting contrast, right? Like at a time when women's wrestling was all gearing towards, hey, we want you to know that women are real athletes and they can do this stuff. Scarlet was out here like, no, I'm hot, so yeah. <laughs> get off me. You know what I mean? And it was actually a very cool concept. Um, yeah. Contrast, rather. So, yeah, I, there, there's a place for everything. You know what I mean? There's a place for everything. Um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> but <laughs> this conversation is getting a little chauvinistic, so let's yeah, uh, I, turn I know. That wasn't <laughs> not the direction I was trying to go with. <laughs> Um, so, so the next match, Ace Austin went out there, and if you if you watch the uh, pre-show, he was you know holding that cheap trophy and uh, that he cl- that easily holds with his left hand, and I don't think he's left-handed, so it, it just it doesn't look like he's straining in any way. So it, it definitely is not the. Uh, uh, you think it's hollow? You think the wood block at the bottom is hollow? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so anyway, he brings a trophy, but he's he's making winning the X Cup mean something a little bit. I, I said last yeah. time it meant nothing, you know. This time, at least he's playing up the gimmick. So you know, uh, that's what really matters at the end of the day, not so much the trophy itself. But right. he was talking in the pre-show, like, why am I here on this panel? Why am I here talking about the show? Why am I not mm-hmm. on the pay-per-view? So I think we ex- expected he was going to try to get into the X Division match, and they said that wasn't going to happen. Um, so they, in a sense, didn't. It wasn't an open challenge, but Scott came out, and uh, you know, at that point, you knew there was going to be a surprise opponent, and I was like, "Ooh, I wonder, wonder what it is." Because the last few times they've been doing this, and I don't count Slammiversary, the last <laughs> couple of times they've teased like, "Oh, mystery partner, mystery yeah. opponents," you know, like it's like always not very 
exciting, you know? <laughs> and uh, this this one really caught me off guard. Uh, Matt Cardona came out, and a, a report had come out that he's going to be around for a little bit. Like, he's there for the set of tapings, okay. but he's not signed to the company. So maybe he will be. I know he previously said he wanted to be in AEW. He was there for, five, I think, a five-match contract and then was mm-hmm. gone, which is really weird that he didn't stick around. Maybe they couldn't come to terms. So we don't know. Maybe him and Impact will come to terms. Sometimes they bring people in and they're without a contract for a while and then they sign him. So um, my first thought of him was that he – I noticed this on AEW, actually, that he's – I remember watching him on, on WWE and just thinking he was a normal sized dude. Like he's a pretty big dude. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And you could, you could really see that uh, when he came out, especially compared to Ace. So uh, he came out and I think it was good that he was already on AEW as a more serious character for a little bit because it, it he doesn't have to worry about the Zack Ryder stench. You know what I mean? Right. Which his yeah. is not so bad. It's not the Kurt Hawkins no. by any means, <laughs> but you know, there's a little bit of, career job or tied to him right. um, but but he's going to do this set of savings i knew it wasn't a one-off because you, you don't show up and win by disqualification in three minutes and then disappear right off into the sunset again but um what do you think about him coming out and uh there wasn't a much of a match to talk about he's clearly going to feud with ace and fulton but right um so i so i was interested to see him there um but I was a little annoyed at the the screw finish that they did. I thought, I was like, hey, man, if you're here doing a one-off, you should be happy to put somebody over. And then I was also thinking, if you're Ace Austin, you know, maybe this is when you need to be more protective of your spot. Because, again, like, you know, no disrespect, but you're an up-and-comer, okay? This guy's doing the victory lap at this point. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. he's, he's, he's out here collecting checks. He's doing it for the love of it, for the fun of it. He probably doesn't need the money. He was in WWE for a long time, so he's made a lot of money. He probably doesn't need to do this anymore, but yeah. he's in great shape and he's been wrestling his whole life. What else are you going to do, right? Right, right. So, so he doesn't, uh, you know, whatever. But so so for me, I was, it, just, it, 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 was, it was interesting. I was like, that you wouldn't, that you would come in at the pay-per-view, do the surprise, and you wouldn't put over a guy who is an ascending guy. You know what I mean? An ascending guy. Um, I think they've actually, you know, they've pulled Ace back a little bit because when we were talking about, what was it, uh, Rebellion last year, I was convinced that Ace could have come out of that with the title. I, I was like, man, you know, I was like, whatever that was, and they had the five or however yeah, many person, multi-person match, and it was him and Trey Miguel and, like, everybody was in it. Yeah. I was like, yo. Why not Ace Austin? And um, so so Ace Austin is kind of an ascending guy. And I also, I like the fact that he came out saying, hey, I won the Super X Cup. I'm the number one contender for the X Division Championship. I was like, yo, boom. Instantly, you made that Super X Cup mean something, mean something. Just by that. And the thing about wrestling that makes everything interesting is if it's tied to something that a, st- a storyline is going to carry over, that's going to actually mean something later. Again, anybody who you know is familiar with the WWE calendar, you know that WrestleMania season starts with the Royal Rumble, right? So everything starts to be more important and mean more come January because you know everything that's going to happen in January is going to lead up to the Royal Rumble, which is going to lead into WrestleMania, right? So just give us something that means something. Now, <clears throat> if being the Super X Cup winner makes you the X, the number one contender for the X Division title, now that means something. So now we're going to care the next time a Super X Cup tournament comes around, right? right? And that was a good tournament, by the way. I love the one-night round-robin format, and it gives you a great respect for the person who comes out on top of that. So again, so for Ace Austin, being able to have that under your, bet, under your belt, it gives you a leg to stand on when you're saying now I'm the number one contender, right? So that all made sense. So you got all this momentum going for you. You should not be doing a job or, or even honestly, you shouldn't even be doing like a non-finish with, with, with Matt Cardona. You should be winning that match. You know what I mean? I think that's one of those times when, you know, I've never been in the wrestling business, but from all the things I've heard, sometimes guys can be a little protective over their character. Maybe that's one of those times when you got to be a little protective over your character. Fair enough. 
Uh, so the, ma- the next match was the X Division Championship match. You know, speaking of the X Division, and it was uh, Manic, Rohit Raju, and Chris Bay. So this was the match. I say I got, I got a little bit of a uh, critique on. Um, and it has to do with the commentary, which hopefully I'll never have to say that again when it comes to you know Matt Stryker and everything. And uh, you know, I, I actually mentioned on YouTube the other day. I got I got to throw this out there that. You know, I was kind of recapping my general thoughts on the recent commentary. And I said, hey, I like Madison Rain and I hated Don Callis. And someone in, in the comments um, got a little disrespectful. So I blocked them as I usually do when they do. But he starts, oh, you're high. Uh, what, what are you smoking? You know, don't you know Don Callis used to work on with Joey Styles? I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. I said that that version of him and the new Japan version, even the AEW right. version, when he called a go match, that's not what we got on impact from him. That right, was right, what right. I was talking about. Not so much his ability, but what his character on impact, like I thought was just bad. And I thought Madison understood her role to where I just, to me, Don didn't, he was just having fun out there. Um, changing from week to week to where Madison was consistent for me, you know, for, so I'm not saying she was better than Don Callis, she just knows, knew her role and stuck to it. But the, the little criticism I have was the banter of uh, the Manic character back and forth throughout the whole match to where they're calling him TJP slash Manic. And then uh, D'Lo was kind of doing this. Well, you don't know that, you know, TJP on social media is not consistent with social media where he's clearly Manic and he has said, hey, I'm Manic. Hey, every, hey, hey, guys, it's me. But then you watch the show and no one knows it. They're, they're assuming it's him, but they don't really know. But, you know, and then they're also trying to prove that he's manic. But right. I'm like, Scott Dumore already knows he is. It's all all very silly, all very uh, contradictory of each other. It was just all over the place from a story. It, it didn't this on screen creative didn't match up with social media which didn't really match up with the commentary. And then in the on-screen creative at some points didn't match up with each other. So that was my only like, you know, small criticism that this match was really, really good. And there was a little bit of banter of who manic is. Right. It just wasn't it just call the match as he's manic and that's it. I mean, but then he took the, he took the mask off and you could see his face. You can yeah. see all the tattoos. He does all the TJP moves. I'm like, what's the <laughs> mystery here? Yeah. It's not like there's a different move set or anything. Like, what's right. the what? What are we missing here? Yeah, and and Matt Stryker was pointing that out. You know, he's pointing out the obvious, but just just the banter about it was was bothering me. Um, but the the match itself, this was one of the better X Division matches for me because even though the storyline again was all over the place, it uh, it put it 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 put together a good match ultimately because. The three guys meant, you know, it meant something for the three guys. It wasn't the standard X division where, like, they'll put an X division match on the pay per view. They'll announce it like the day before, and it's a bunch of randos, you know, like yeah. Jake Christ and all these, you know, you know what I mean. So, um, this was something that that they built to with a storyline. And even though the storyline for me was a little eh, and 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 all over the place, like I said, it made the match. You're a little more vo- emotionally invested in the match. And uh, I was pretty sure Manic was going to win because whenever you do a triple threat, it's pretty rare the baby face loses when there's two heels involved. Mm. You know, I, I've just kind of noticed that. Yeah. Uh, yeah because yeah. it, you know. Um, so what you, what you got on the X Division match? Again, this was just the best X Division match for me on a pay per view in a while. Yeah. For me, this one was actually all about the wrestling. This one was all about the wrestling. Um, you know, I like Chris Bay, I like Rohit. Uh, I like TJP. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm a fan of all three of these these wrestlers. Um, but the match was outstanding. Oh, man, that match was outstanding. There were so many. And I kill NXT for all the false finishes. But here's my thing, right? Here's my thing. <sighs> There's a time and a place for everything. I think in tag team matches, uh, a high-speed triple threat match, you know, a trios match, there's places for the minimal selling bunch of false finishes. Like there's a time and a place for everything. When I see in 
Johnny Gargano and Adam Cole, two five foot, 220 pound guys, and you got to damn near shoot them to get a pinfall. Like, I, I, I can't take it, bro. I can't yeah, take it. Like, yo, there's no reason you should be kicking out of everything, yo. I, 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 I hate it. This was the opposite of that. This, this was three guys who look like high level athletes just hitting each other with something, and it would be the third person that would come in and interrupt yeah. the fall. That's what makes it okay, yeah. right? That's what makes it fun. So when you see, you know, it looks like person number. And they had a couple of ways of doing it. They would do they would do the, the one where it would look like one guy A gets guy B down and guy C would break up the pin. And then they would do it where um, guy A gets guy B down and guy C would come in and knock out guy A. And then he would try to cover guy B, but then guy B would kick out. Like that's yeah. fun ways of doing the same, do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that is not, again, that is not, not, not the equivalent of fucking Adam Cole spontaneously combusting into flames and still kicking out of a cinder block to the back of the head. Right, right. Like, I can't stand that shit. But, I, um, yeah, man. So, anyway. Now I brought it up a few podcasts ago on an AEW pay-per-view where the uh, Dark Order hit, like, four straight finishers on QT Marshall and he kicked out. Like... <laughs> This was an eight-man tag team match, right? Like, you're right. gonna tell me one of the three people couldn't just save the uh, like it? It those small details make it to where it's not exhausting. You, you it know, just, it takes you out of it, man. It yeah, a- absolutely. It. That's but, why but this didn't have that effect for me. I thought this was actually very well done, and then yeah. it was funny because after all that, it won with like a cool-looking roll-up. And so, right, right. But um, but I enjoyed it. I enjoyed this match. It was this was to me. This is all action, 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 action. I already like the characters. I wouldn't have felt bad or good either way. If, you know what I mean? It wasn't like if Rohit won a title, I was gonna be like, damn, I didn't want Rohit to win. Like, no, nah, it was cool. I, I like all these guys, like I said. So yeah. yeah, this was this is action. I enjoy it. I like the characters. So this was there was no unless they had a crappy match, you know, there was no lose in this for me. The uh, my concern with this is that when they get when they when the next so this episode of us will or this podcast is gonna drop maybe around the time impact airs, <laughs> maybe hopefully a little sooner, but um. I'm I'm worried that this feud is just going to continue. You know, like they've been they've been putting a lot into this, but there's no one in the X division. Like who who the hell else is Matic going to feud with? And then the X division feuds are always multi man feuds. Like yeah, um, we we kind of got away from that a little bit with Brian Cage and and uh, Matt Seidel and, and and some of these dudes. They were just you know um, uh, Rich Swan being one of them. They were just you know one on one feuds, and then we're kind of getting back to those this multi man right. thing. I feel like this is just going to keep going and it shouldn't because he just, he just beat them. Right. You know, yeah. but I, yeah. I don't know what's next for the division. Well, so. we, well, Ace Austin, Ace Austin. Oh yeah, that's true. But, or is he going to work with Matt Cardona? Now? I think he's gonna work with Cardona for a little bit. I, I have, yeah, you have to next. believe. That's interesting. So, um, so, uh, knockouts match, Taya Valkyrie versus Deanna Perazzo. So this is the match of a pay-per-view. We're always like, this is the show stealer, the knockouts, championship match and even though this was really good the whole pay-per-view was so good i didn't look at this as like oh my gosh this is a step above everything else like it it just it just fit into everything really well they followed up the x division match and it it still worked you know what i mean it wasn't like oh put the i don't know why a wrestling company would ever put the women after the x division like that's kind of crazy but it it worked like and um Taya Taya taps out, or she says I quit basically. And when you got Rosemary reforming Decay, and then there was a, a who shot Bravo angle they did earlier. Do you get the feeling they're gonna say that it was actually Taya, and that she's gonna go to jail and be written out of the company? Could be, could be, yeah, could be. Uh, I could see that. I just go, just coming into this match. I I almost didn't want to watch the match because I knew they were going to tap tie out. And right. I just didn't want to, like, okay. So for me, realism goes a long way. And I felt like I I, I didn't, I didn't think Ty had a chance to win this match. And that doesn't make sense to me. 
You know what I mean? Like, I think Taya can right. fight in real life. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah, us, yeah. I I don't. Um, it's so so going into a match where I don't think she has any chance to win kind of takes the fun out of it for me a little bit. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. I don't know if Deanna Perrazzo can fight in real life. I don't think she could beat Ty in a fight in real life. You right. know what I mean? But um, so anyway, it just it was it was it was weird for me, man. It was weird. Um, but you know, listen, Deanna Perrazzo, she's great at what she does. She is, you know, she's a she's a good wrestler, and it takes two to tango. You know, they made her, you know, they made it look good. It just it just felt weird. I don't I don't know what to say, man. It just it, just, it felt weird, like because I, obviously I knew she I knew how it was gonna play out, but it just felt weird like it felt like it felt like one of those things where like i could tell that tires on like an outward trajectory right right so, so um like, like you said like it, it, it feels like they're writing her off and i felt like we were kind of robbed of the match we would have gotten if we got this match six months ago that you know? makes sense yeah um and so that yeah that that took me out of it just a little bit a lot of it so <laughs> um yeah. so yeah it was what it was it was what it was. and then now here's the thing that's also interesting is who's diana barraza going to work with now you know what i mean uh yeah. they're running low on uh on, they're gonna have to introduce some new blood into the knockouts division because <laughs> diana's a wrestler you know what I mean? Deanna's a wrestler. And, you know, if you remember what I was saying, like heading into, you know, Bound for Glory or whatever that show was, um, I was like, man, you know, Impact is, they're on a verge of having a bunch of women who can really, really wrestle, have some great wrestling matches. And it's like, now you look around and, okay, they've done Deanna versus Jordan twice already in big match spots. They're not doing any of that with Ty right now. And so, you know, Kylie Ray's not here. So it's like, what are they going to do? So yeah. it's interesting to see, you know, where that's going. But, um, you know, I, I don't know. This match wasn't a huge hit for me. Maybe I'll go back and watch it again and feel differently about it. But like I said, I just, I didn't think Ty was really going to have a chance to win. So that took me out of the moment just a little bit. That makes a lot of sense. I think that's where the disconnect was, where I was like, it didn't stand out as that standout match that the knockouts always do, because it was like, it kind of felt like she's on the way out the door. And, you know, to your point, like now Susan is part of a three, a trio basically with them. She's wrestling uh, on the Tuesday episode. So it's Susan and uh, Kimberly against Jazz and uh, and Jordan. So it'll be interesting to see Susan rest. This will be her first like serious wrestler that we've seen from her. So I'm that'll be interesting. I'm interested to see if she can wrestle. I'm, interested to, see if she, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to see if she can like really wrestle. Yeah. Uh, so. Because... You know, the Sue Young thing is mostly character based. Uh, when she did Susie, Susie basically did nothing. Right. And so if if she's this character is like straight, you know, Dean Malenko. So <laughs> if you can wrestle, I guess this would be now the time. Now would be the time to show it, I guess. Right. Yeah. But they definitely got to bring girls in uh, to answer your question. I would imagine if if uh, if I had a you know gun to my head, I would imagine in this set of taping she'll probably defend against Jazz at one point. I can see that happening. Is Jazz um, still? Yeah, because she's wrestling in this tag team match. Oh, okay. With Jordan, so I would imagine she's she's around for a little bit. I was thinking it was like a you know to the pay per view type of thing, but I mean she's she's still there. So, um, and they need the baby face, so. I would expect to see her around for a little bit. I, I would, I would think she's going to wrestle her. I can see her having a wrestle, a match with ODB also. Um, mm. That's a way of her kind of feuding with some people that aren't going to be around long term, and it yeah. gives them some time to to you know to do something. But they're definitely entering a dangerous territory where if they throw too hot of a feud at Diana in this set of tapings and too hot a feud at Tasha and Kiera, they're not going to be able to. It's going to be very hard to find something else for them to do at the next set of tapings. I mean, you, you can't throw too much at the, these girls right now. The division's not big enough. So I think it well, they got till April, right? They got till April. Yeah. So you got, you got four, you got, you know, three to four months to, you know, to, to, to get us interested in, an, in another big match. Yeah. So. so right now you don't have to do all that. Just, just, right. just give us, don't, don't overthink it. Um, so the the next match was Karate Man versus Ethan Page. Ethan Page, um, I, I'll tell you what I've 
what I know about this, but let's talk about the match first. So <laughs> I don't, I don't think anyone liked this that I saw. Yeah. Was it kind of entertaining and kind of funny? Like, yes, it was. I'm not saying it's the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. That's I'm not saying that at all for what it was. It was, I mean, yeah, we thought it was bad, but I'm just saying there's worse things out there. There, yeah. there was, it was kind of charming in a way it was short. If it was too long, then that would have been a problem. But it was very short, and uh, the Karate Man rips Ethan Page's heart out, so that writes him off TV. So the story for what it was made sense. You know, at one point they killed Ali, uh, they killed Ethan Page. Now they're probably sending Ty to jail. So at least they're writing people <laughs> off TV instead of just not showing up one set of tapings. Um, so I don't know. I, I already know you didn't really care for it. But you can give any other. Yeah, I mean, look, you know, I just, I'll repeat. I think I told you this. Uh, for me, I thought, it, you know, that was cool and that was fine. If that was like something on his vlog. I'm a big fan of Ethan Page's vlogs. Uh, you know, I really enjoy the content. I think he's very talented at creating that type of, you know, uh, content for the web. And I think something like that would have been great for the web, but not for a $40 pay-per-view, man. Sorry. Uh, yeah. You know, seriously, like I honestly... I was not going to buy this show before uh, before Moose got put into the main event. Um, and so, like, you know, you got to think about that when you're putting stuff on a show, man. Like, you know, everybody is not, like, just throwing away. Well, actually, nobody is. It, it, listen, this is Impact. You know, people are either ordering on their, on their cable bill, so you're throwing $40 onto your cable bill, or you're, uh, you're ordering it on, like, Fight TV, like I did. And, you know, you th- I, I like Fight TV because you get to save it. You know what I mean? I can go back. I can go watch it yeah. right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. But, um, you know, some people's cable don't let them DVR or whatever. So, you know, you just watch it and it's gone. But um, anyway, the point is, for that type of money, I think that, you know, the production value's got to be a little better. You got to give me a little more than that when, when I'm actually paying for it. So that was my, my take on it. So Ethan Page put a statement out there. It rubbed a lot of people as far I said a lot of people, Impact fans the wrong way. Impact haters ate it up mm-hmm. um, to where he was. He apologized and said, you know, the the edit the Eddie was excuse me the editing was shitty. Um, they didn't let me watch it. Which if he wasn't a contracted talent, you know, because he was just working per appearance, I can see where they were like, he doesn't need to approve this. Like, mm. you know, he he's on his way out the door. But they said, oh, he was, you know, they were mad that I was leaving and they basically disrespected me out the door. I watched it with my family. You know, they didn't see my vision through. I wanted to leave Karate Man for YouTube. They, uh, you know, I put more into it than Impact did. Uh, he said this? Was, yeah, yeah. He, let, he, he released a long statement. You didn't oh, see wow. this? No. Oh, he totally bashed the company. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You know, where to where with his vlog and social media, he's always praised this company mm-hmm. and yep. you know, has even said, I hope to resign here, but we'll see. So mm-hmm. I say take the stuff with grain of salt because if you if you take everything else he's been saying for years compared to now, I, I tend to believe what he said previously when he wasn't speaking in anger. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, you have well, well, you I'll, gotta think though, so for him, um it, for for him, right? Like this is his. He's trying to sell himself. So the last thing you want is for, um, you know, to have a bad name out there. Right? You're trying to sell yourself. So you don't want if if you're if you're in tenuous contract negotiations, right? Like let's say he has a deal on the table. I would assume he has a deal on the table. But let's let's say you know, your next company is thinking about how they're going to debut you. Right. Like the last thing you want is to have negative press out there. And so I think um, and here's the thing, too. You also got to take into account, which is if you are coming out of contract negotiations, at some point they showed you a number that you were insulted by. Or, or yeah. You know I what I mean? Like when it when 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 it comes to business, they say it's not personal. But it is personal. It is personal. There's never been nobody, never, ever, who's gone into negotiate negotiations and didn't take it personal when they tried to lowball you. Yeah. Nobody, ever, in the history of life. If you're like, yo, I think I'm worth 
a hundred thousand. They're like, man, we got forty. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. Like, like yeah, you know, like you know what I mean? Like you, you know, he he's 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 completely reshaped his body and you know all of that stuff. You know, listen, man. Like I'm sure he was being a good soldier carrying the company water for all the times he probably could have blasted them. And so if this is something, and I haven't seen the statement, I'm going to look it up and I'm, I'm going to, you know, read it and I guess determine more about it. But if what happened was they said, Hey, send us something that this is going to be like, here's the, here's the rough plan that we're going to write you off TV with, you know? And, and he's like, Hey, I got this cool idea. I got this other character, you know, we'll do this thing. I'll edit it up. Boom, boom, boom. You know, I'll send it to you guys. I'll let you, you know, editing team put the final touches on it. Cool. All right, cool. And and if they're just like, ah, just give us just whatever, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I could totally understand that, bro. I could, because again, if you, cause you're your own brand, right? You know yeah. what I mean? Like you're your own brand. And so if they're making you look bad, now, again, you can also say that some of that is on him based on what he sent them, but we don't know. You know what I mean? Like, we don't know. You know, they could have said, look, man, just do anything in front of the green screen. We'll make it look good. You know, we don't know. We don't know. So. Well, well I got, I, I know a little. Well, I, there's always two sides of every story. So, you know, it's in the middle, whatever. But before yeah. I get to that, you're right. He transformed his body. He was a good soldier for the company. And we talked about this before where he, he had a number in his mind. And I, and I, I said this, I was like, if they show a you you said the same thing. If they give him a number and it disrespects him, the dude is out. Right. And it's different when you said, okay, say, and we're just throwing rough numbers out there. You said I'm worth a hundred thousand. Okay. Well, here's 40. That's disrespect. If you say right. I'm worth a hundred thousand, what we were offering you 85 at you bet. Okay. Well, let's see what we can come to we can come to an agreement once you you feel like you know your worth um it, it's not like some of the guys who are just happy to get a contract like he he knows his worth he knows that other people want him he he's no he knows he's in demand so you have to be making competitive offer and uh you know the argument i'll say is why didn't you have it edited yourself if if this was yeah the problem so i totally agree again truth is always in the middle what Ethan Page said in, in his statement was that he didn't want to bring Karate Man to television, that Impact wanted him to. And what I was told was the exact opposite, was that they didn't want to do it and he really wanted to. So I don't know what the truth is. I can't, I, I'm I'm not going to say, even though I have someone I trust, I'm, I'm not going to sit here and be like, because I don't know Ethan Page personally, I'm not going to sit here and be like, oh, this dude, He's wrong. Everything he said is wrong. I'm just saying the stories contradict each other. Yeah. And the from what I understand, the footage that he shot and sent wasn't wasn't enough or yeah. wasn't good enough. I think it was supposed to be double the length it ended up being. Mm. If I remember, it, it was really short, and I think that yeah. was part of it. Because I think it was three minutes long, and it was supposed to be six or something like. And it was something like that. I don't remember. I have to look at it again. But. Uh, they, from what I understand, they worked with what they could, and um, their their impression of his time with Impact was very different than how he portrayed it. You know, oh wow, I think they felt he was very happy the whole time. You know, and it, so you just gonna have to read the statement for yourself. And again, truth is always in the middle. He's he's clearly we'll, upset. we'll talk offline. You'll feel yeah. me in more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's clearly upset. You know. Yeah. Uh, if you take my employer right now, I'm happy with my, my pay. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to work five days a week. Like I I'm good. But if I got a better offer or if I decided to quit, there's probably right. a lot of shit I would say about my company now that doesn't really bother me right now. Mm -hmm. But if I was on the way out the door and quit, I'd mm -hmm. probably be like, Oh, these, you know, da, 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 da. I think that's human nature. Right. When, when you leave a company, I think most people bring up the complaints after the fact. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? So, um, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll talk later about it, but, yeah. uh, let's get into, uh, so Eddie took on Sammy. This was barbed wire massacre. The last time we saw barbed wire massacre was OBE versus LAX. And I think it was a good match. Yeah. Uh, it was a very entertaining match, 
But this right here felt like a blood feud. I mean, it literally, it was blood feud. There, there was hatred. Um, they even the way they changed the ring where there was like a steel cage side and barbed wire. The mm -hmm. N64 controller was one of the most classic things I've ever done. I thought that was pretty uh, cool. That, that was really funny. But the Sammy Callahan's music, I thought he had one of the best theme songs. When they came out, I was like, oh, the two best theme songs in Impact are going to go against each other. Dude, yeah. I don't know what the hell he came out to. And maybe it fits his character now, but that was for me on like follow Bob Willie Mac level. Like I thought that was just really bad, but it's again, not my choice. He, he, if he loves it, then awesome. That works for him. Just me as a fan. I thought it was horrible, but um, it's, it's whatever. It's not, it's not my, uh, my decision, but uh, the match itself, Eddie gets the win. It made me realize Eddie doesn't seem to ever win with the Boston knee party. Like he always seems to win with some other move. Even though hmm. Boston E Party's his finisher in a rest in a world where most wrestlers winning with their finisher. But uh I don't like Eddie's hair. That I think that's my only like complaint about the dude. Um I didn't know he had like didn't have teeth. <laughs> I always I always knew something was up because you can like see one like rogue te hmm. tooth in the back when he talks. So I always knew something like was was up, but I didn't yeah. know he actually like could remove them. So that that was pretty crazy he showed his <laughs> face in the screen it's like holy shit but this was one of the coolest matches uh a, a gimmick matches i've seen on the show in a long time you know as i said eddie's match usually is not one of my favorites because yeah. you know, several times it's been with tommy dreamer um i really like the tlc match with alicia against um uh angelina and uh, oh my god that was so good yeah. i wanted that to be for the x division championship so bad I was like, I, I was like, so this is, a, a, you know, my whole theory about the X Division title, you know, being completely out of place has been formulating for a while. And uh, around that time was one of those times that I was just thinking to myself, I was like, man, let's stop using the X Division title in just these flippy matches and let's, let's make it mean something like put it between Put it in a in, in a feud that means something. Now you could argue that that feud was a blood feud, so it didn't need the title. But then, if you add the title, they got a reason to keep going. It's like, yes, I hate you, and I want your title, or yeah. I want to. You know what I mean? So I thought that you know the feud between the wolves. Oh man, that had so much potential. But I saw a a Facebook post from Davey Richards that he's actually had a bunch of surgeries, and that's why he's been out of wrestling. And uh. Oh. It said like he's had a bunch of surgeries. That's why he's been out of wrestling. And he just recently had one that's making him feel like he's ready to get back to normal. So I thought that was interesting because I thought he got out of wrestling to be a medic or whatever. Yeah, so to, no, to be a doctor. Well, he was a he was a paramedic, but to be a doctor. But he said he was going to return to wrestling a couple of years ago on a part time basis, but that's never really happened. Yeah. So um, I don't know him. Can and he do it when he's not on call. <laughs> yeah, Ethan pa him and Ethan Page hate each other. So do they really? Maybe that, yeah, because he no showed a couple of Ethan's uh, Wrestle uh, One show. So maybe that's why Ethan left. Maybe Davy's coming back. I don't know. Mm. But uh, yeah, did I ever tell you? I, I've told this story in the podcast a couple times that I saw Angelina Love out in public a couple years ago, but I was in a professional capacity for my job. Yeah, you did and, tell me. <laughs> yeah, and it was a it was a lot of people around, so I was like really upset that I couldn't. I mean, she was 10 feet away from me and I was just like, oh my God, like I, I just wanted to like talk to her, say something to her. Um, but I, I did tweet at her and she, she read it and, you know, we, so we talked about it that way. She's like, oh, you could have said hello, but I, I was just not in a capacity to do so, unfortunately. But, uh, but it was funny to just randomly see a wrestler out in public like that. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, so Full, full metal, not full metal, but bar, barbed wire massacre. Uh, th this killed it. This really, they've had some classic barbed wire massacre matches in the yeah. past, and I didn't know if they were going to get back to that, but this this falls in there. This is going to be their impact plus throwback, whatever, for years to come. They're going to be milking this one because this, this one was really good. So what do you think of it? Yeah, no, this was good, man. It's just, uh, you know, these guys really have been stacking up you know, good match was have a good match. And one day they'll come out with an Eddie versus Sammy DVD uh, or yeah. something. I don't know if DVD is still a thing, but yeah. they'll come out with an Eddie versus Sammy collection. Right. 
<laughs> and this will be in it. <laughs> Coliseum home videos. Yeah. yeah no, they, they still put their stuff on DVD. I think Matt Striker even held up the DVD. Oh, okay. At one point. So <laughs> I, I don't have much use for DVDs these days, but I guess yeah. I buy one here and there. But for the most part, if it's streaming, it's kind of pointless. But yeah, you could put together a whole series of them one day. And then these are two guys who are dedicated to staying with the company too, which is which is a good thing. So they they will revisit this again one day. Absolutely. Um, I still think we're gonna get Shamrock and uh, and uh, Sammy versus Eddie and Dreamer within the next couple. Probably, of weeks. probably. Yeah. <laughs> it made me funny. It made me laugh when um he was talking to Alicia. <laughs> he goes. What are you going to do? You're going to go out there. You're going to fight Ken Shamrock. <laughs> like, that's the, the conversation is just funny. So <laughs> excellent effing match. Now find something for Alicia to do uh, before you piss me off. Even <laughs> um, so let's talk about the main event here. Moose stepped in for, for uh, Alex Shelley. I tried to get some news on what happened, but I was just told the same thing. Everyone else was I wasn't privy to anything more than that. It was just something personal happened. We don't know what it is, um, but he was unable to compete. I'm sure he's really disappointed about it. So he teamed with Chris Saban and, and uh, Rich Swan is the champion against Kenny Omega and the good brothers. Um, I put it in that order on purpose because impact would always say, or Josh Matthews will always say it's Kenny Omega first, you know, the, the impact team was the afterthought of the match is always yeah. Kenny Omega, AW world champion. Oh, oh yeah. He's wrestling rich Swan. He's our champion, by the way. Yeah. So I'm sure you agree with me on this. I was saying this on my YouTube upload the other day. I'm really glad Moose was part of this match because I didn't realize how much smaller rich Swan and Saban were than the other team. I didn't know rich yeah. Swan was that much smaller than Kenny Omega. Like, I thought they were like the same size, dude. I, I really? obviously I've never seen him again. <clears throat> we saw him brawl a little bit on the episodes, but I didn't know it was that stark of a difference. And well, I, I, I never thought of Rich Swan as a small, as a big guy. No, not a big Swan guy, a big but guy I didn't think, like Omega looked huge next to him. Yeah, I mean, like, but Rich, but Kenny Omega has like muscle definition. Rich Swan yeah. has barely any mu- muscle definition. Like, yeah, Rich Swan does not look like a guy that does like he he relies on the cardio. He, if he was a basketball right. player, he'd be the guy who pays all his weight room fines at the beginning of the season. Right. Yeah. Like, Yo, I'm not coming. <laughs> but here's the thing, though. If if Alex Shelley was in this match, I mean, Doc Gallo is a 6'8", dude, I, I believe. Mm-hmm. It, it would have just looked really odd him out there with a bunch of yeah. little dudes. You know, where Moose made it made it work. Totally agree. You know, totally from, agree. from a visual standpoint. But – um. I think this match was just about everything I expected to be. AEW's, uh, you know, if, if you guys watch that show, Kenny Omega has the most elaborate ring entrances to where <laughs> Justin Roberts, he's, he's like, you know, he's the first AEW wrestler to, to appear on Impact Wrestling at the start of the Hardy Kill pay per view. He is the G1, da da da. And he, every single match, it's this long entrance and it's, it's absolutely hilarious. It's very elaborate. So, but just to see him come out here with, with no, you know, especially used to seeing like fireworks, all this shit on EW, just to see him kind of like stroll out there with Don Callis and there was no, you know, no girls with the brooms or nothing like that. Yeah. It was a little, a little off for me. But, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. But I mean, nitpicking, whatever. Um, but I thought the match was everything it, it should have been. Again, Swan looked a little small compared to him, but. It um it legitimately hurt my heart when the, when uh, Swan and, and Moose and uh, Saban lost this match, uh, especially watching him, Rich Swan take the pin. That was mm. that was hurtful <laughs> as a, as as someone who loves Impact uh, to see you know another guy come in and do that. Um, what I'm told is it's story much of a bigger story. So just like stay tuned, don't lose your shit immediately. That's where you know everyone. Oh, our champion looks so weak. Um, I, I'm more emotionally invested in Swan now for losing that match. You know, in all <laughs> honesty, but Moose was the established himself as an absolute superstar here. They are very lucky that he wasn't booked on a match already. Mm-hmm. Um, someone, ugh, crap, I, I meant to write the name down, but someone on on Twitter said it was 
he uh, he tweeted at me. He said it was refreshing that Impact didn't feel the need to throw everybody on the card mm. because sometimes there's this formula now that let's let's get everybody on the pay per view right any way we can. Every title has to be on the line. Like the Impact World Title wasn't on the line here in this right. in this pay per view. The tag team titles weren't on the line, so that was refreshing. Um, that the main event was a tag team match. Uh, mm-hmm. of guys put together that was refreshing um you know reminds me of macho man and mr perfect versus rick flair and razor ramon in the main yeah. event of a pay-per-view like it was just nice it was refreshing they're they're very lucky they didn't book moose into something which yes. they would have been screwed if he yes. had a match already and they needed to find somebody dude like i i don't even know who they would have pulled out of their ass from the roster but uh they got really lucky on this one but um but again, Moose really established himself as a star. So give me give me your thoughts on the main event because I haven't. Wor- I, I want to rewatch this match. I didn't get a chance to. I really want to. Um. Watch so, my, I I I rarely say something. This was as close to perfect as it could have possibly been. And I I'm not trying to be like impact mark or anything like that. But like, look, <laughs> I I believe like this in the sign of a good wrestling match is when the winner and the loser come out of it looking better than they did before. And that happened here. That happened here. The winners and the losers came out of this looking strong. And not only that, but they built this show around Kenny Omega. The selling point of the show was Kenny Omega. And they treated him like a big deal. He was the last person to make an entrance. It, 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 it was, and it was right. The, the fact that he got the pin at the end over rich swan was the right move it was 100 the right move and that's no disrespect to rich swan but like but the reality is that you know uh aew is giving the rub to impact here aew is bringing eyes here kenny omega is bringing eyes here he should this is part of kenny omega's larger story and that's good that's good so i got no beef with rich swan taking the pin in the middle of the ring but my big thing coming out of this that i loved was moose yeah i as i said before i was not gonna buy this show until i saw the tweet that moose was replacing alex shelley in the main event um you know I've been I've 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 been I've been I've been championing Moose's you know uh, the the idea of including him in the main event for the longest time, but really and truly since the thing he did with EC3, he has taken it to another level. He yeah. has turned it up a notch. We talked about Ethan Page transforming his body. Moose transformed his body, and this dude in a match with six superstars. He was the person who more than anybody else looked like a superstar wrestler. Moose was the person who more than anybody else, if you were picking people out of a lineup and said, I want this person to headline my wrestling program or my wrestling company, Moose would be the one that you would pick. And he showed out in the match. He was, he was showcased when he was in the ring with Kenny Omega. He looked great. When he was in the ring with Gallows, he looked great. I, I mean, like, this was, to me, a showcase for Moose. And the fact that Moose was, you know, he came in and saved the pin a couple of times. He got knocked out right before, knocked out of the ring before Rich Swan took the clean pin. And it made me want to see Moose versus Kenny Omega. And so I feel like what's going to happen going down the line is, I, I, I think this is, here's what's going to happen. I think Kenny Omega is going to say to Rich Swan, "Hey, I pinned you. I deserve a shot at your title." And I think Kenny Omega is going to defeat Rich Swan for the Impact World Championship. Then I think Moose is going to go to Rich Swan and say, "You were supposed to give me a shot at the title." And so now I'm pissed at you. Then uh then Moose is going to have a match with Rich Swan, let's say maybe Slamversary. And Moose defeats Rich Swan, and then Moose is going to challenge Kenny Omega for the Impact World Championship and defeat him at Bound for Glory. And so coming out of this year, 
Moose will be one of the top stars in wrestling. He'll be considered one of the top champions in wrestling. And it's, and, and it's all because of Kenny Omega. I'm not all, but a big part because of Kenny Omega. That's how this type of thing works. It, it, it works really well. And if you saw uh, Dynamite this past week, the next thing that they're going to do, remember in my predictions, I said that this AEW impact relationship was going to be a long-term thing. This is not like a one-shot or an invasion angle, as people love to say. This is like a long-term relationship. You know what this is? This is AEW's version of ROH's relationship with New Japan. But instead, in this case, they're New Japan and Impact is ROH. Yeah. They got the, the smaller company that they're giving the bigger platform to that can feed them talent to give them fresh matches and they can send people over to get fresh matches and all of that stuff. And it's going to be even better once we start getting fans back in the building. But this main event, was it was it was done so well. I love yeah. that high-paced, uh, that, that fast-paced, you know, high-speed, trio style of match it was done so well and and yeah and the right person won the right person won the right person took the pin i wouldn't have been mad if alex shelley took the pin i would have been mad if moose took the pin but yeah. uh but this was done well because moose had the most to gain in this match more than anybody else the only thing i couldn't possibly have seen happening is if rich swan were to pin kitty omega i could not have seen that happening yeah. that blew my mind i'd be like well that seems to have been shot yourself in the foot but um, but other than that man i think this main event was pretty much perfect man it was it was it was great and i think like i said you know kenny omega got the win as he should have so all those guys come out of it looking good and um and i think you just elevated moose and i don't know have you seen on twitter uh gia's Mean Gia's uh, after match interview with rich swan i i saw a link to it i haven't seen it yet but moose attacked him right yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah. It was well done. Mwah. Bravo. <laughs> so, yes. So it was well done, man. Top to bottom, this was a good show. This was a good show. Like I said, save for the uh, Karate Man, Ethan Page segment. This was a really good show. Uh, I got it on Fight TV, so I can go back and watch it whenever I want. I'll probably check it out again at some point this week. And, yeah, man, Impact, man. Like, again, if you just – Let's let's date it back to last year. You know what have they been doing? Their pay per views. They've been hitting out, hitting them out the park. Good shows. The crowds have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. I'm very interested as to when fans are going to come back. But I think when fans come back, I think they're going to come back excited, and I think they're going to come back in bigger numbers than we were seeing before. They're really killing this uh, Swan and Moose feud, and the way they tied Willie Mack into it. Mm -hmm. where you really built Mil Moose is a really legitimate heel. I mean, knocking Willie Mac out. Millie, Willie Mac never got his comeuppance. That's the that's the bananas part of it. Like, it didn't matter. Moose knocked this dude out like three times, three or four times. So, you know, one of the things that I was saying, right, uh, about Impact, I was saying there's no Roman Reigns, right? This is how you get your Roman Reigns. They got to win. And like one of the things about like Roman that, that makes people so, so aggravated with the Roman Reigns or the John Cena or whoever is the top guy is they just beat people. And even when they're like in the wrong, they still beat people. You know what I mean? And, um, and so, yes. So you need stuff like this. Like Moose needs to do this. He needs to go over when he shouldn't and all of that stuff. This is how you turn him into an attraction into somebody when he comes on your TV screen, you have to see because I legitimately believe he can beat anybody. Yeah, and they have um, they the rebellion pay per views come in April. They ten, Kenny Omega was teased for it. The interesting thing, like when you watch AEW, Kenny Omega has a clear feud with John Moxley, and a couple weeks ago or a week or so ago, when the Good Brothers showed up, and they uh, they're clearly going to build an angle towards them and the young bucks. Um, like you could have had rich Swan show up too. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. it's you, it, Kenny Omega keeps coming on their show, whooping their ass. And, and you're going to tell me Swan, they never crossed their mind to show up on dynamite and, and get some comeuppance and try to promote the pay-per-view, you know, neither here nor there. But I guess what I'm saying is that on AEW, Omega has separate feuds, you know, like he's, he's feuding with Moxley 
Uh, he kind of had the thing with Phoenix there for a little bit, which, I mean, I don't think that's going to go anywhere past the match they had a couple weeks ago. But there's just... When the Good Brothers showed up the other day, you know, Moxley showed up, the the Young... But all these dudes showed up, mm. had nothing to do with Impact. At that, They didn't even talk about Impact. Even though these motherfuckers showed up with the Impact Tag Team titles, they mm. weren't just like, hey, these are Impact Tag Team Champions. Like, nothing like that. <laughs> yeah. So, it... it I guess what I'm saying is Kenny Omega's tease for the pay-per-view. I I feel like they're going to take some kind of... Someone else is coming with him, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. And when I say someone else with him, I don't think it'll be his teammate. I, I see more of a scenario where the main event is Kenny and um, he might have to team with Moose or he might have to team with Rich Swan against Moxley and then Swan or Moose. <coughs> Excuse yeah. me. That's that's kind of my prediction. I think it's going to be something like that. So yeah. I think they're going to step up the, the the partnership a little bit more. But I think I just think someone's coming with him this time because he's got all this shit going on at AEW that's right. not impact related. Yeah. So I, I can't see how that doesn't bleed over at some point. I think they're going to take the uh, the crossovers one at a time. Yeah. So I think like. I think the next thing, you know, who knows? Who knows? Because they're going full on with Bullet Club. And I got to say, um, shout out to Solid Monster. Like, he pointed this out perfectly. Uh, New Japan owns the Bullet Club IP. And we saw that Bullet Club logo all over the, that, that main event. So you think of that and you think of the fact that Chris Bay and TJP worked the Super J Cup for New Japan. There's a relationship between Impact and New Japan, um, you know. And so, and so, where this going, man? So, think about how many people have been thirsting over AEW working with New Japan. What if, if they've cut Ring of Honor out of that loop, and now it's it's going to be they just replaced them with Impact? That's in, that's actually interesting because you're right. They do only intellectual property on that so and so like so i i man 2021 is going to be very interesting for impact wrestling 2021 and beyond i think that and the thing that i think is so interesting here is that people who have just seen impact as the thing to shit on for the longest they're being forced to the impact is being forced into these conversations yeah oh what did kenny omega do this week oh he was in a phenomenal Six man match <laughs> right. on right. the Impact Wrestling pay per view. You know what I mean? Like, oh, you know, oh man, who's? Oh, I, I heard Tanahashi is gonna be at a show in New York. Oh, it's Impact Wrestling. Right, right. Then I'll go. You know what I mean? Right. Like, so I, I mean, listen, man, this is a very interesting thing. It, it, it calls me back to something that you said a while ago, which is that if you think about it, right, like the God, 2014. That was like six years ago. You know what I mean? Like there's people who have just started watching wrestling who don't even know Impact when it was in like the, the Hogan era and 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 all that stuff. So, you know, I don't know, man. I, I think we could be on the verge of, of seeing Impact turn a corner in terms of their perception. And, you know, f- from there, sky's the limit, man. Right, and and that's why I get so mad at them living in the past because you you're you're continually reminding people like, hey, watch this video when shit was hotter, or yeah. and then people start looking looking it up and start looking at the history of the company and it's just like, ah, but there's a there's a young audience that knows nothing about those days and they just have to tap into that better, you know, having the Good Brothers watch Bloodsport on Access TV is probably not the demographic you're going for. Um, that was part of Wrestle Week, so you know I, I love stuff like that. Though honestly, I could never understand why I didn't do more of that when they were on Spike TV, right? Like I, I remember hearing like Velvet Sky was like a big video game person, and to me, I was like, this. I was like, why don't they have Velvet Sky doing the video game show, whatever it is? You know what yeah. I mean? Where she's talking about, you know, or or what's what's the big video game convention E three. The, the E3 convention. I was like, why do they have Velvet Sky covering that? You know what I mean? Stuff like that. I, I To me, stuff like that is, is good. Like, get the eyeballs, man. Get no, it's the good old eyeballs, get the new eyeballs, get everybody. But I'm just referring to watching a movie from 
maybe the early 90s late oh, 80s yeah. I don't, that, that's kind of what i'm getting at <laughs> yeah so you know that's what i'm talking about the demographic i i do think we're gonna see we're talked about the knockouts and who who they're gonna work with there's opportunities for diana to cross over with a pretty large division with the AEW women's division yeah they've already d- crossed over nwa yeah to where Serena Deeb's the champion. She's not even an NWA talent. Right. They've done that. And then the women, they have tag teams in AEW too. Uh, women tag teams. Um, Di- Diamante was at Hard to Kill. Mm. She took a picture right, with right, right. the girls after she they dates, won. She uh, dates Kier Hogan. Right. And she's tag team with Eva Lise. Eva Lise and her won the tag team tournament yeah. for the women there. So that, it's a very, yeah. very natural match that could happen. Um, so yeah, I could see that man. That that would be a great way to leverage that relationship, honestly. It really yeah. would because AEW, again, you know, they got a lot of women who are still getting ready for TV, you know, for primetime TV, and they got a big platform. So, you know, the more you can get women on TV, the more you can get them ready for TV. You know, I mean, like they could put Ty Conti on TV every week. <laughs> But, but but you know other they got other people on TV too. You know what I'm saying? We, we were watching uh <laughs> Ty Conti and Anna Jay against uh Britt Baker and Penelope Ford, and my my girlfriend was like, "It's the big booty team against the no booty team." <laughs> so you gotta, you gotta you're play. like, what? I didn't even notice. <laughs> even though I think all four are very hot, but. You know. <laughs> <laughs> you're like um, i'm totally into this for the technical aspects <laughs> yeah absolutely yeah <laughs> oh man but uh, oh. i tell you what i think this this will wrap us up without uh, <laughs> going too terribly long so mm-hmm. you made it to this point in the show thank you so much we hope you guys enjoyed hard to kill we loved it and uh can't wait to see what's next good things are coming like I'm I'm very excited. I don't usually watch Impact Live. I'm gonna try to do it this time around because mm. uh, the commentary, obviously, and, and just I can just tell big things are coming. So now I feel like I have to watch. Before it just wasn't must see must see for me, and now now I'm feeling like I gotta watch it. So okay, interesting. So uh, that'll do it for us and the Cool Factor Podcast uh, for TW. I'm BQ, and we'll talk to you guys next time. Peace. Dessert.